Well, hello and welcome back to the official Scottish Rugby podcast. This week, it's a poignant episode, uh, but hopefully a, 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 a celebratory episode as well as we as we talk about uh, Tom Smith. It's just over a week since since the devastating news of Tom's passing, uh, and the shock still remains. But there's been so much written and said about Tom, about what type of person he was, how much how special a person he was, how special a player he was. And I'm delighted this week to be joined by uh, two uh, greats of the game who, who know him very well, Sareen McGeekin who coached and knew Tom very well. Uh, and, of course, uh, Scotland head coach Gregor Townsend played alongside Tom for, for a good number of years as well and been a, a really close friend. So, Geech, I'll come to you first and I say just over a week and the news is just so, so sad. I know you've, you've um, posted comment before, but it's just so so devastating to get that news at only 50 years old after after his illness. But it's uh, is it any easier to accept it a week on? No, sometimes you get news which hits you full in the full in the face, doesn't it? I mean, um, no, I was sadly shocked in a way that it, you just felt that Tom had put such a fight up that you know I was hoping he'd make it to our '97 Lions reunion later in the year, and uh, we'd been talking about it. Uh, but Tom was so upbeat. I mean, he wouldn't talk himself the illness or whatever that I think uh, for a time we thought you know I certainly thought he was he was beating it or he was staying on hold and so when um, Gregor you know had sent us all the message that he'd um, obviously uh, got worse over the last few weeks it that that was a bit of a shock and uh, I think a lot of people got in touch with him as well through that uh, but it shows, I think, just how much people thought about him when, you know, the reaction and I think speaking to him over, you know, I've messaged him regularly and uh, um, we, we talked a little bit um, over the last couple of years. We, we did something in London together when he came over. You know, we got him in the Hall of Fame, which mm -hmm. which I think was tremendous because I think it does then in other people's eyes reflect how actually how good a player he was and Gregor will know that far better than me about playing with him and and just is one of those players that was always in the right place or seemed to be at the right time but in a team you know that was um, needing always needing um leaders he whether it, he did it in the way he played rather than the what the things he said but um no a, a, a very sad loss yeah absolutely I'm, i want to touch on leadership uh, a little bit as well i've got a really strong memory of playing alongside tom and just a, a great example of his leadership and how natural in many ways it was to him it maybe appeared unnatural but in terms of action it was just phenomenal and, and gregor you um was a close personal friend of Tom and, and kept in close touch. And even although the you know we kind of knew what the final outcome would be, it's still such a shock. Um, even you know days prior to that, being in touch with him, and then see, you know last Wednesday finally getting the devastating news. Yeah, and and I, I'm with Geech. For some reason, we we just thought that he'd get better, um, and because he'd fought so well. Uh, over the last two and a half years, it, it was following the the Scotland France uh, World Cup warm up game in 2019 that that he'd complained of, of pains in his stomach and eventually went to hospital. Um, and then they got the, the terrible diagnosis. It was already stage four, and there's nothing they could do. But two and a half years later, he he was still here. Um, he's at our game this year against England. Obviously, the, the tributes that, that flooded in um, last week and the tributes when, when Tom was inducted in the Hall of Fame and was, was walking out with his family against before we played South Africa will be great memories for him. Um, and he did keep fighting till the end. Mm -hmm. uh, Zoe, his wife, said that uh, they couldn't believe that even for a few more days in hospital, he was still fighting. Um, but um, they, they, they were able to be with him uh, in hospital and they'd obviously knew this day was coming. So a really sad day, but probably more accepting for, for those that had, had spent the last few days with him. 
Yeah, it's really important. I hope they, they get strength. I know they will get strength from the support and the, the messages that, that you say, Gregor, you know, for the last, well, last three years, really. Um, it's, uh, it's just utterly inspiring to see what, what, how he dealt with uh, what, what he had to go through. But we, we want to talk about his rugby and we want to can he raise as many smiles as well in the next 20 minutes or so, thinking back to the, the impact and the, the personality that Tom was. But tell us, Gregor, when, when you first came across him, did you play against him, play alongside him? What was your first memory of uh, of Tom Smith? Well, well Tom was a one-off. He's um, one-off as a, as a rugby player uh, and a person. And you, you, you see some front rowers nowadays that have skills um, that, that can pass the ball. But back in the, the mid-90s, um, the, the props didn't do that. Tom was unique in his ball-playing ability. So I played against him. He must have been 16. I was 15. So he was in fifth year uh, at Rannoch uh, High School, but played for uh, Northern Midlands and the schoolboy team. And I got one game that year. To, um, someone had uh, been suspended from school, so I managed to get called up. My, my one game of the season was against North and Midland schools, who were the best team by far. Uh, and we lost by 50 points uh, up at Mayfield. And I have a couple of memories from that game because it was a, it was a big sort of step up um, in my career. Um, one of them was putting a kickoff slightly low, let's call it. Uh, Sliced? <laughs> didn't, didn't, didn't reach the second row. But this loose head prop caught it on the 10 meter line and just sprinted past me. And I'm like, oh, we, as South school players were going, who's that guy? He's a, he's a prop, but he's, he's so quick. Uh, the next year, we, we were selected in the, the Scottish schools team, under-18s team, um, and Tom and I played together. Tom is known as a quiet quiet man um, throughout his career, but back at school boy, uh, level, he was literally very, very quiet. He didn't say a word at all. Um, and for some reason, I just remember bonding with him uh, he, he was an excellent um, loose up. head, but he, we moved him to, to number eight, more um, the selectors did, because yeah. he was our best forward. So he took that through into his, his playing career. And, and and what was remarkable for me about his playing career was the ability to, to go up against bigger men um, and do his job at prop, as well as showing his, his fantastic skills that he had in attack and his, and his toughness. To, to play for so long at the highest level. I heard Gregor they were, they were going to move him from eight to ten. <laughs> he could have. He, <laughs> Just to he, keep the pressure on you. There was there was a few times where I think he fancied uh, going to ten <laughs> and probably looked at the tens and gone, I could do a better job than those guys. As long as you didn't have to move for ten to eight, Gregor. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Gregor mentions his toughness there and, and how hard he was. And, and famously, it was a 97 lines Geach, that um, you know, you really came to prominence on a world stage. But you, you were head coach of that 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 team, that squad, um, and you picked him for the tour with only having three caps. He just made his debut in '97 for Scotland at Twickenham. He had only three caps under his belt. Did you know of him before those three caps that persuaded the the selection, or was it just on those three caps alone? Um, no, it was Jim Jim Telfer Jim got in touch. We were looking. I'd gone to South Africa the year before and I'd spoken a lot about Jim. I felt we had to try and play rugby differently mm -hmm. against them. And um, we, we tried to do that, but we tried to look at players that would think a bit differently or could do things a little bit differently. Uh, and Jim had been in touch and he just said, there's a player just been picked for his first cap, he said, uh, against England. Mm. He said, he's a bit special, keep an eye on him. Now for Jim to say that mm -hmm. about a player is almost unheard of. They have to prove a bit more. But he'd obviously seen him a bit as well, I think. Um, and that England, so the first time I saw Tom play was at Twickenham, was the England. Was his first cap. Mm -hmm. um, and because I was only watching him, I, I didn't actually watch anybody else at the time. But but because Jim said he was so different, but but could do different things. Um, and actually, I mean, it wasn't a brilliant result for Scotland that day. 
but it was just his game involvement and his awareness and as you know as Gregor said he, he would get into positions and um, he'd be there early or his support lines or his carrying lines and this was away from scrum and line out responsibilities that you were just looking at a very good rugby player um, and so um, we you know obviously kept an eye on them tracked him through um, the games uh, but it was it was quite handy because really Fran Cotton, Jim and myself were picking the squad so mm -hmm. we didn't have anybody to convince um, mm -hmm. and you know, he was very easily into the squad. I mean, it wasn't a last minute, oh, should we do it or not? He was he was in that squad um, pretty early on. And and just because um, he, he was just different. Um, and we'd felt at some point uh, we'd need we'd need that. I think Jim's only concern as oh, it was his size, but mm -hmm. even in those three you know games. Uh, in the set piece, it had not been an issue at all. So, so even at that point, you could almost say, was he picked with test aspirations in your mind as a head coach, or was he there almost to to apply pressure? Because everything you're saying there was almost what happened in the test series. So, you know, for someone to have you know, so much confidence after seeing so little of them, to be seriously test aspirations almost immediately. Yeah, I, th I mean, I think well, I always did, but generally keep an open mind as a coach as well yeah. about the players that you bring into a Lions squad uh, because players react differently in that environment. And, um, you know, it was, we genuinely didn't pick the test team until the Tuesday night before the first test because mm -hmm. we wanted every player to have had the opportunity to show what he could do. But he was in the squad you know, like a lot, like Gregor was as well, you know, the, the, these were players who could do things differently. Mm -hmm. And and it, it, Jim and I were just keen to, to keep looking. Um, you know, I, I'd said to Jim, my perfect game is you don't have any rocks, mm -hmm. um, which he, he told me there might have to be a few. I what think would you, I what to would Jim, remember. What would Jim practice if there was no rocks? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it, so it, it, it was the fact that we genuinely believe we've got a group of players from uh -huh. which we would get a, a, a very strong test team in a rugby sense of, of it would it would play or it could react and adapt. And and so, you know, that's why Tom was there and you know the first week Gregor remembers at Weybridge where we did different a lot of players had played a lot of rugby and I was sort of keen to do different things but just to show that um, I had this thing in my head that we could do things in threes and mm -hmm. we could play out of contact and play the second runner in and things like that and just challenge to do different things in that week one of them was climbing beer crates <laughs> um, you know, and Tom was probably in the end, he, he two players supporting you on on the rope as this came down from the trees. But uh, Tom, you know, Tom was three or four crates ahead of anybody else by the time everybody had, had a go before the pile collapsed and you're left hanging in the tree. Um, but it actually showed just the determination that he was not going to be second. Mm -hmm. um, if I thought, if you know, if it was left to him, uh, there was nothing going to be put on one side for for the effort he was going to put in, and and that flagged up even in that week. Just just seeing that that sort of reaction from him. Um, but as Gregor said, not a lot of words came. But, but it, yeah, you know, and I think just we'd all say it, it, it was it was a player whose actions spoke, spoke everything about him. Yeah, just on that, Gage, I think uh, the, the more you, you talk about Tom grabbing his opportunity and the skill set he had, I think what's really important to add as well is the mental strength. No, nothing faced Tom. So when, you, when you've only had three caps, you, mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of people would think, oh, I'm just, just happy to be on tour. Or um, I'm beside Jason Leonard, Graham Rowntree, Keith Wood, these legends. 
Um, no, Dad didn't work with Tom. He would give everything um, and he'd have an inner confidence to say, I, I can take on these, these people, win my place in the team, and then I can take on this huge Springbok pack uh, and the three tests, which, which he did. Uh, and he had that throughout his career, a mental strength. Some of that is in perseverance, resil resilience, but also just the, the inner confidence to, to play your best rugby. And that's shown through in the last two or three years as well. That you know, in the, the fight he had off the field, absolutely You've mentioned it already. How how brave and how courageous and how you know how well he, he fought the disease. But Gregor, you played alongside him more than playing against him. You played together in France and Brieve, obviously the Lions you spoke about and and, and and Scotland as well. What are the the kind of the memories, the, the strong memories of playing alongside him rather than being up against him? Yeah, lots of good memories um, with with Scotland. He uh, he got us out of our pool in the World Cup. I was going to ask you that. Uh, we both played that game. Um, we all that remember was, that. Yeah, so he got us out of hole there. Um, he could he could have scored close at the post to make the conversion easier. Though, <laughs> that, was easy. that was easy one for you, mostly. Uh, so that that was some big days for Scotland. The Lions obviously stand out with with what he did in those three tests. A playing club rep level. Uh, with them was was a real joy um, to have what another was it, What English... was the, the French take on Tom? Because you would imagine that he would be gold dust in France, was he? he would be... No. No? No. <laughs> yeah, well, I think for us backs he was. But the, <laughs> the front rowers did not appreciate the fact he was um, passing the ball. <laughs> he was skillful. I, I remember his first game, clearly, we were playing at Montauban and... Uh, Tom just played like like Tom did. He would be out the scrum and he'd be carrying the second phase. He'd be passing the ball. Like you loved playing with him because he was like an extra, extra back, and he invariably did the right thing. He said to him at half time, "Oh, um, the tight head Brockler uh, just had a word with me uh, because he told me that that's not what we do in France uh, he's when all, you're he's in the scrum." Head, yeah, he said, when you're in the scrum, you stay there for 10 seconds. If you have to count to 10 seconds, that's what we do. And Tom goes, well, the, ball, the ball's gone. I need to get involved and play. No, no, we stay scrummaging. We do, don't do that in France. <laughs> but he, he, let, he, he changed perceptions. Obviously, he was, uh, he was ahead of his time uh, as a player uh, and uh, as a front rower. But you also have to scrum. And that's, it. that's what maybe people for, forget when they talk about Tom and his, his a ball playing ability, you you have to scrum against the biggest men in the on the field, uh, which is the tight head props. And when you play at Scotland Lions, you're playing against the biggest men in world rugby. When you're playing France for two seasons, you're up against big men. And Tom wasn't the biggest man, but technically, determination, um, that mindset of never giving in meant that he was a really strong scrummager. Right? You you'll know more, better than me, Gage, but I, I don't think his scrummaging was ever considered uh, a weak part of his game. He would, I remember we, um, in the World Cup in 99, uh, we played Samoa in this poor Samoan tight head. Tom was winning penalty after penalty. Against him. Like, Tom was dominant at scrum time as well as being great in the loose. So yeah, there was there were some great times. I'd love to have played sevens with him. Yeah. Like, he, he, I know he, he had a, a great tournament um, for Botsonians uh, when he first broke through, but um, he'd be a brilliant forward to have in the sevens. Mm -hmm. And just going back to the technicalities that you probably remember as well, that scrummaging session against the machine in Pretoria in 97, where this was the machine that pushed back at you. And uh, Nigel Horton, uh, his company uh, had got it over there for us. And he always kept saying, oh, uh, the Springboks can push another half a ton than you because this, this thing was coming back. And Jim... Uh, we, we'd had two or three sort of flaky games front five wise, scrummaging wise, as we obviously alternated the, the props. Um, and they had this session against this machine that was putting all the tonnage back at them. Um, Tom there at, at loose head uh, and just never, never moved. Mm -hmm. Um absolutely rock solid technically um he was superb and and then they'd run away get a 30 seconds rest or less jim would have them back in on the machine uh and and they would go again and there wasn't 
one part of that practice that Tom wasn't right. Mm -hmm. and, and that pressure that was coming through from that machine was phenomenal. Um, and, and I think then as well, Jim, you, you know, we, we knew that technically, um, even with the weight, uh, he was comfort not well, not necessarily comfortable, but in control. Uh, and Tom very rare. I, I, I can. I was trying to think of times when you'd think, "Oh, did he do that?" Or you never remember Tom being out of control in whatever he was involved in, um, which I think shows just the level of talent that he had. He made a lot of things look easy. Yeah, so there was a clip going around where he scored that. I think we were all involved. He scored a try against Wales. To draw a level, I think in two thousand and one it was. Yeah, you know, running like a centre. That, that two years later he actually put a grubber kick through for me to score in the corner at Murrayfield against Wales as well. It's just so easy. I think second receiver grubber kick through, and as I can, he celebrated myself. Um, I turned round to see the, the whole team mobbing Tom with it, and he had this kind of <laughs> wry smile on his face. That the real star of the show was Tom with the grubber <laughs> kick, and even that was under control. I mean, I've seen backs and back three players struggle with that execution, but. It was uh, everything, as you say, Gage, no matter how much pressure, physically or mentally, he, he was always in control. One wee thing that pop on as well is you would have played with Ian McLaughlin, Gage, yeah. and knew him well, uh, a fantastic loose head, David Soul as well. Uh, yeah. Did Tom, I mean, these are greats of the game as well, but did Tom and what he was able to do set a platform for like Rory Southern to have today, for Alan Jacobson before him? What he was managed to achieve as a, a relatively small prop, did that give belief to, to those who, who came after him? Yeah, with, with without a doubt. I, th I, th I think, um, you know, Gregor said earlier that he was doing things that people didn't associate with props. Now, Ian, M Ian McLaughlin was a good prop, you know, a yeah. good, skillful. Were they quite uh, similar? Players. players. A bit smaller than Tom, I think, yeah. the mouse. Mm -hmm. Um but but again, you know, he in, in test match he had good a brilliant captain as well. Mm -hmm. Um uh, and and obviously David David Soul, who who um, played with the Lions in 89, captain Scotland for the Grand Slam. And again, a, a prop who they were props who did more mm -hmm. than just prop. Mm -hmm. Um and um but but te technically I think the all-round game. That, that Tom had um, had had just moved moved it on, and I think Graham Rowntree had said it, you know, back on the Lions tour that he'd no complaints about not being in the front row when he looked at the quality of rugby player that was mm -hmm. in front of him, you know, and and he was referring to Tom. In leadership, something you mentioned, Gregor. I know you you work hard on developing leaders and have so much knowledge around leadership squad you played of and, and the squad you're coaching but Tom was a real leader Geach has already you know said it and, and the, the point that I vividly remember Tom was captain um uh, we were I think we're I think it was an in game at Murrayfield uh and I was second in the tunnel just at that moment where the referee knocks the door and you, you get ready to leave a changing room just 30 seconds before the game starts and I, I'll never forget how empowered I felt as a player when he just turned around and looked me in the eye and all he said was, Mossy, I need your help this afternoon. That's all he said. And I thought, it made me feel 10 foot tall. I thought, wow, I feel empowered to do whatever you need me to do. And in terms of, I thought that was a really good example of leadership in quite a different way to what we usually usually see. Gregor, you, you'd I say played alongside him. In terms of his leadership and your experience of leadership, how special was Tom on and off the field? He was. Probably the number one thing about leadership is, is setting the example uh, and you performing well uh, as an individual. And that gets seen, th seen through training and your games because it influences those around you. People look to you as a leader to, to display the traits and the, the performance levels that the, the team aspire to. And Tom was so consistent um, throughout, throughout his career at training and playing well um, and being resilient enough to, to go through long trainings and play a lot of games during the season still give that level. So that, that was the number one thing. He, he was confident. Uh, and while he didn't talk a huge amount, um, that is not 
an essential part of leadership. Uh, Martin Johnson didn't talk to a huge amount, and he won a Lions series and a, and a World Cup as captain. So the, the leaders that get the respect of the, the players in the change room are those that are putting in the hard yards that are going to help the team win more than others and are consistent, and Tom certainly was. I have to say as well, you you probably were there, Mossy, but um, he's given the best after dinner speech, uh, <laughs> captain speech that I've seen, uh, which was against the All Blacks. So we um, to give us some context, we played Argentina the week before. Mm-hmm. Um, Argentina captain goes up, speaks first. Tom replies. I think we just lost that game by a couple of points. Yeah, and two thousand one. And after the dinner is finished, um, all the Argentinians are calling up Omar Hassan to sing a song. He's a tenor, operatic singer. So he, I think he sings Nessan Dorma and the, the whole place is a, give him a round of applause. So no, no one else knew what had happened then, but Scott Murray had bet Tom, uh, his best mate, uh, that £100 that he would, he, if he would sing a song next week at the, the dinner of the All Black game. So... <laughs> All Black game, we, we did really well. I remember we did really well for 70 minutes, but All Blacks kicked on to win. Anton Oliver, after the game, um, talks about the game and coming to Scotland. And then up up comes uh, the Scotland captain, Tom Smith, to reply. Uh, and he just goes, start spreading the news. <laughs> and has two or three lines of New York, New York, and says to Scott Murray, that'll be £100, thank you. Which, like, out of character... Mm. If you didn't know Tom, like yeah. because he's a quiet person, but he's so mischievous, yeah. <laughs> and like the confidence to get up in front of a room of four hundred people when you're Scotland captain to sing New York, New York was, was brilliant. And no one knew about it apart from Scott Murray, and we're going, "This is amazing!" Tom Smith singing <laughs> New York, New York. It, it would always surprise you. It always I remember just having this really quite cheeky grin on his face and almost talking to himself because he, he knew he was so, super intelligent. It just just such a brilliant person he knew when he would when he could push the boundaries on that Geach as a as a senior player as a, as a captain did he challenge you as a coach as yeah. well off the field he he was good I mean well you know I mean you two were both senior players as well and part of conversations uh, but sometimes he'd just come up and say uh, or just say um, if we want to do that can we get so and so in place uh, you know, uh, at the next before the next breakdown or something like that, or he'd talk about, um, you know, positioning of. Actually, I think there's something on if we can if we can set a contact up, you know, outside centre rather than inside centre, whatever it was, and he'd have, he'd just talk about it tactically and, and I think, you know, Gregor said earlier about when he was in France. Because he was so aware, away from the set piece, he could read where the best rugby could be played from. And, and so he, he'd always have, and he'd sometimes just sidle up, you know, just say, can I, have you got a minute? <laughs> and, it, and it probably wouldn't be much longer than a minute, but it, 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 he'd just have what, it, what he had in his mind where he thought it, if we could do something and just change one part of it, we could achieve something else or make it easier, whatever it was. Um, and, and you know, just talking as a group senior players sometimes, it, it was just all the time on, on all the key elements, which, which I think, again, made him such a good, a good leader in a different way because he understood the challenges and the responsibilities that, he, that different players had in different positions. And... and um, you know, he talked that way, um, and I think very comfortably, and probably a lot of times, I'm sure, one to ones with with players on the quiet. You know, of just doing something, um, just just he did to me as a coach, and I, you know, I, I would say I benefited hugely from just having an extra source, you know, in the team where where you just clarifying things yeah, it would be very difficult to say no because his personality but also because he would be right because he's astute mm. you know reading the defense reading the attack um just a real um, intelligent quality rugby person player gregor you were you traveled to france earlier on this week uh for the funeral and 
you said Zoe and the kids and, and everybody were just kind of blown away by the by the amount of support and the amount of famous faces and, and friendly faces that, that made the journey. Um, how, how, how was that as a, as a I suppose it's, it's a difficult meeting, but as an event, you know, a lot of people would take comfort from, from you know, the, the, the turnout from how, how well received Tom was. Yeah, absolutely. And it was a journey for a lot of people to get out there. Um, um, with Smith's house says it's uh, in the middle of the southwest of France in the country, about half an hour from Agen, in between Toulouse and Bordeaux. Uh, so, so to see so many people come out from uh, not just Scotland but throughout the world, uh, just to pay their respects was was outstanding. And uh, the family loved people being there as well at the fa at their home. Um, it was it was a a reunion. We we am um, for a lot of people. Uh, we had a I reckon it last must have lasted about two hours. We're around this um, bar and. Uh, it was like everybody's got a Tom Tom Smith story. Let's let's share a story. But there was a there was a time limit on the stories. Stuart Grimes' his story lasted too long, so he never got a chance to finish his story. <laughs> Don't so many be, there were so many people wanted to to talk about Tom and share the stories and and to have Angus and and Emily um, and Ted there as well uh, as well as Zoe. Uh, I, I know you could tell it meant so much to them, but Tom Tom meant that much to us. Um, and he's he's. He's obviously gone too far too young, um, but over the, those last two years, he's really done his family proud by how he's fought, how he's stayed positive, how he's had no self pity, and how he's created some great memories, especially for his youngest boy, um, Ted. And well, throughout throughout my career, I've been proud of Tom, but um, seeing him play for Scotland. Um, Play very well in France club level and also play so well for the Lions. I remember watching the 2001 tour mm -hmm. uh, as a supporter or a frustrated player and just being really proud of Tom starting test matches um, and doing very well. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're also proud of Tom over the last two years and he's he's got a great family. Um, both him and Zoe have got done a lot to create a brilliant family and people will be uh, looking after them, thinking about them in the future. Yeah, it's absolutely. There's a, there's a legacy there. There's a, there's a performance legacy and there's a human legacy. That I think it's really important that we have these conversations and share these conversations because uh, it, it certainly deserves it and, and what it achieved on the field and off the field. So, um, you know, we just let's say send our support and and, uh, and wishes to, to the family um, as the the days and the weeks and the months uh, ahead. Um. Just one thing, Mossy, can I just add that, you know, unfortunately, I, I was trying to get over that. I couldn't yeah. make it in the end. But um, no, uh, just um, two weeks ago, I'd, I'd, I'd left a message on Tom's phone when, you know, Gregor had been in touch with us all. Um, and Scott, Scott Murray rang me back on, on, on Tom's phone. <laughs> you know, he's... Um, is is struggling a bit. He is is fighting hard, and mm. we we had a conversation. I said, "Well, thanks for for letting me know, Scotty." The next afternoon, Tom rang me, mm. and he and I couldn't. I, I and he he just said his first words, were, "How are you?" Mm -hmm. You know, and um, we had a conversation mostly about rugby and Scotland and. Other thing, and I could you could tell he was struggling to speak well, but but the fact that he called you that's what he did, mm -hmm. you know, he felt he had, and I'm thinking, you know, this is amazing, you know, mm -hmm. and just reflects just the quality of the money and the character, uh, and the way he's just his thinking and uh, he's caring about other things, you know, it was very often. You know, not Tom Smith. Um, about Tom Smith, it's it's funny that because he's got every reason not to do that. He's got every reason to say I won't make the effort. And I think I know through, through talking to, to a lot of friends and a lot of friends of Tom, he would have done that to everyone. So it's it's you know when he was so tired, when he was you know so ill, he's taking the time to do that to, to everybody that's getting in touch with him. It just you know it's it's a special moment for you, Geach, but. It's, he would have done that 
you know, two or three probably times that day as well to everybody yes. else. It, it, yeah. You say it just underlines that how how special he is and he and he is and in the work he did with Fortitude to Charity as well to to think of others and, and help of others. Um, you know, for the future was amazing. The, the other thing, I'd quickly say on that is that was almost an unlikely friendship, wasn't it? Tom Smith and Scott Murray. Scott was bold and brash and as <laughs> up to high jinks as you could possibly get, and it was always it was always one that. That you wouldn't have picked in a lineup unless you knew them, but they were so close friends, weren't they? No, but it shows, you know, again, who's by his bedside, mm -hmm. Scott Murray. Mm -hmm. You know, that it, it shows that friendship. And you know, Gregor has been part of that group as well. You know, that that I, I think is something that when you see it, it's more than rugby. Mm -hmm. And and um, you know, to know I think Scotty was gonna be there all week and then he had to. Um, get home and think, but but the fact that you know, just all as Gregor said about the funeral and the players, um, you know, in particular, were there, just shows that impact of you know the man, not just on his sport but on those he met.